Side Hustle Show 261, the most overlooked productivity hack. This is health and fitness for busy entrepreneurs. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show because nobody else is going to do it for you. I've got a productivity show for you today, but we're not going to talk about how to manage your email or what to-do list software you should use. Instead, we're going to cover how you can prioritize your own health and fitness, even if you're like uh, all of us, you know, really tight on time. Now, if you're anything like me, when things get crazy, the exercise and the healthy eating are usually the first things to go. But building a business, building a side hustle takes a lot of energy and a lot of brain power. And to perform optimally, you've got to take care of yourself. The inspiration for this episode actually comes from my own, uh, call it the realization that I'm not getting any younger, chasing a toddler around this year. There have been times where I just felt like I was dragging, like slow, tired, easily distracted during work, you know, anxious. And on top of that, I've had a series of really frustrating injuries this year. I had uh, a shoulder surgery in the spring. I've been going through physical therapy for my other shoulder. I've had some annoying foot problems and was just feeling gross, you know. Uh, so I decided to do something about it to see if I could reverse this trend with a renewed focus on health and fitness. And to help me do that, I've been working one-on-one -on -one online with today's guest. Rob Dion is a certified personal trainer and co-host of the Open Sky Fitness podcast, which you can find at openskyfitness.com. So far, I'm down around five pounds and thankfully didn't have a ton of weight to lose to start with, but I'm back to a belt hole uh, that I haven't seen in a few years, which is pretty cool. But most importantly, I'm feeling noticeably stronger and feeling like I've got more energy during the day. Now, part of working with Rob is these uh, check-in calls. And during these calls, there's been half a dozen times where I've been like, oh, this is really good stuff. We should be recording this. So uh, we decided to do just that. I invited Rob on the show to share his insight on how busy entrepreneurs and side hustlers can prioritize their health, what really drives results, and an audit of one Side Hustle Show listener's daily routine from the Facebook group. That group is uh, at sidehustlenation.com slash FB if you want to join us in there. Notes and links for this one along with a free PDF highlight reel summary with all of Rob's top tips are at sidehustlenation.com slash Rob. Before we dive in, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare.com. Skillshare is the online learning community with over 17,000 classes in everything from video editing to social media marketing to web development. You can probably find some fitness stuff in there too, all taught by expert practitioners. And what's cool about Skillshare is you can access their entire class catalog for the price of a couple cups of coffee a month. So why not skip the Netflix tonight and join the millions of students learning and growing on Skillshare today? Absolutely free. That's right. Skillshare is offering Side Hustle Show listeners one free month of unlimited learning. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Side Hustle. Again, that's Skillshare.com slash Side Hustle to claim your free month. This episode is also brought to you by DropshipLifestyle.com. You might remember hearing from Anton Crayley, the founder of Dropship Lifestyle. He was back on the show back in episode 189. At that time, we talked about why dropshipping is such an attractive business model, how you can pick profitable products, and how Anton recommended getting started based on his own experience and also from teaching thousands of students how to do it. Today, I want to invite you to join Anton's completely free 10-day dropshipping mini course, which of course covers a lot more ground than we could do in a podcast episode at dropshiplifestyle.com slash hustle. That's dropshiplifestyle.com slash hustle to get started today for free. I'll be back with my top takeaways from this call with Rob after the interview. Ready? Let's do it. People always ask me, how do I get my mom to start eating healthy? How do I get my husband to start eating healthy or whatever it is, some, some, some friend or significant other? And the problem is, is that they can't get healthy unless they really want to. So you contacted me because you wanted to change something. You wanted more energy. You wanted to be more productive. And you wanted to feel stronger. You didn't want to feel like a slob. I think you said in our first like email correspondence about this was like, I want to feel less gross. Yeah. <laughs> and that takes the pressure off of me to find a way to convince you that you should be healthy, right? I can't just start convincing someone that they should start eating healthy, start working out. It doesn't kind of work that way. It's kind of, and maybe this is a bad example, but it's kind of like an alcoholic who has to hit rock bottom in order to realize there is a problem, that there needs to be some kind of change. So the same thing happens with our health. We kind of have those markers in our lives where we realize, oh man, <laughs> this isn't going well. I need to change something or fix something here. And for me, it was my wife had taken a picture of me at a waterfall 
at our honeymoon and I looked terrible. My gut was sticking out. I was like, and it was totally this like candid shot where I had no idea she was taking the picture. She's like, Rob, I turn around and then she just snaps the shot. And I'm like, oh <laughs> no, that's going to be horrible. And I looked at it and that was the big eye opener for me. It was like, oh my God. All right. I got to make some changes here. What's crazy is like, if I were you, I would put that picture up on the about page because like now i know you're like this super fit dude and it's kind of like you got to have the before picture to show people where it's at you I mean you talk about it and but i, I would put the picture up there uh-huh. it's somewhere i think it's actually on my home page oh, is isn't it? it on my home page maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong <laughs> it's on there somewhere maybe we'll not find it. jeez you're right i must have bounced it off it was like <laughs> this is my newer version of my page yeah i'm gonna put it on there you're right but yes i mean it was a really embarrassing picture now, I don't have to be super fit. Things have changed in my life over the years that I feel like there's less demand to have to be ripped and rock solid because I don't think that's a realistic lifestyle. I don't think that most people need to be that way just to be healthy. And in reality, what I'm really trying to help people do is become healthy. So if you feel like you're avoiding pictures, if you feel like you're uncomfortable where you're having to wear baggy clothes, where's the line where you're eventually going to say, okay, you know what? I probably need to change something. And, and when I say change something, I don't mean go on like a four week cleanse. I don't mean just start going on some kind of crazy diet. I mean, start really making some changes. Yeah. So you're altering the course of your life for the better. So that's where, that's where it starts. Like you got to want it. Yeah. You really got to want it. Exactly. Okay. Well, tell me about your diet plan. Like what role does nutrition play in this? Because I don't think all carbs are necessarily evil. No. So w the way that we eat is more, if we were to wrap it up in a bow, it would be very, very similar to paleo. Okay. And a lot of people get scared of that word because they think it's just a high protein diet. And technically it is. If you're talking to Dr. Lauren Cordain, the guy who created the paleo diet, it is a high protein diet. But we don't necessarily believe in it full on. We believe that everybody has their own personal diet that they have to discover. And that's a really important part of being an adult is figuring out how your body functions with the food that you're consuming, right? And paying attention to how it's influencing you, not only your weight, because that's the thing that I think most people focus on when they're thinking about their diet, but also their energy levels, their digestion, their mood, right? This is things that you and I have talked about. You need to have a certain amount of energy in order to be able to function throughout the day as an entrepreneur. You want to be able to push through and not feel like you're having all these lulls in your day to day. And so your food has a huge impact on that, not just your workouts. Your workouts are like, if you were talking about 100% of being healthy, workouts are like five. You're 95% food. It's almost like, think of it like this. If you had a race car, and you want to really get good at driving it fast, you take it out on the track, right? And you, and you do your loops and you're just like, you're constantly practicing and practicing. That's your workout, right? But everything else that happens when you're not on the track, having a good mechanic, putting really good fuel in there, updating it with different kinds of, I don't know, parts and fluids, whatever the hell, I'm not a mechanic, <laughs> but I, you know, you get the gist of it, right? That's the important part. That's the nutrition for us. That's not just the nutrition, but that's the vitamins and minerals and all the different, and the water that we consume and the beverages that we consume. Okay. That's what makes us really healthy. And you can go as high as 95%. That's higher than I would have guessed. I, yeah, because you can't outwork a bad diet. You can get stronger. You might even see a little bit of results, but you're still going to have, I mean, not to sound morbid, but you're still going to have heart attacks. You're still going to have the cancer. You're still going to have the digestive issues. Like you might have an autoimmune disease. You're going to have all of that stuff you're fighting all that off and you're trying to push your body to whatever limit you're trying to do physically by working out really hard. Yeah. You can't outsmart your body and the way your body functions. Yeah, I think this is a, like an evolutionary bug in the works, right? Because like, why are we trained to have like donuts taste so freaking delicious, but broccoli tastes like broccoli? Like, I think something is wrong in the programming there. Well, yeah, because processed food tastes amazing <laughs> and our bodies utilize those nutrients and it's not a very good amount of nutrients, but it utilizes them very, very quickly. So the reason, okay, so you, you're asking like, what are some of the foods, right? So processed food and sugar, if you were to eliminate those two things from your diet, you'd probably be about 90% healthier than most people. That's just a fact. Now, is it just refined sugar or like eating an apple and like that has sugar in it, that's okay? Or is that even that's too much? Yeah. So what I mean by that is, uh, are things like white sugar, right? Added sugars to certain things like drinking a, a Gatorade, which most people think is totally fine, or Powerade or even like a Coke or something like that. Those things have a huge impact yeah. on our weight and on our energy levels. But if we're talking about sugar from fruit, 
it's not as much because we're getting certain things. We're getting fiber from that and we're getting other nutrients, other vitamins and minerals from that fruit that help slow the process of absorbing the sugar and turning that sugar into fat in our body. Okay. So it doesn't make as big an impact to have things that are higher in sugar when it comes to real whole foods. It's not as big a concern. Sure. Now there's different, I mean, and we can really dive into it in terms of there are people who eat like a high fruit diet that do struggle with their weight still. And they might not eat any processed food, but they might be eating like three bananas a day in addition to two apples a day to addition to a smoothie. And they're struggling with their weight. And that's because you can still eat too much sugar. And we're not designed as humans to eat that much sugar. If you think about it, it's seasonal. So we wouldn't be able to have access to that as humans as often as we do right now. Sure, sure. And just to also go in a little bit further, we said the processed food and what is processed food? Processed food is foods like bread, pasta, cereal, anything that wasn't in its original state. Like if you couldn't pick it off a tree, if it didn't have eyeballs at one time, (laughs) uh, it's probably processed. And we used to say in the health world, we used to say stay on the perimeters of the supermarket. You can have all your fruits and vegetables, your meats, your dairies and things like that. All of that stuff is on the perimeter. But now all of these companies are so smart that they started putting all these processed foods along the perimeter. They started doing this and putting these in there. People think that they're doing pretty good, but it's kind of these big food companies' job to trick us and make us buy their food. They don't want us to buy fruits and vegetables and meats and and seeds and things like that. They don't want us to do that. They want us to buy their packaged foods. What do you think about the... Tim Ferriss plan of, was it 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking up? Is that in his four hour body? I didn't read four hour body. Yeah. His one rule was don't drink calories basically, which is kind of what you're saying. Like stay away from the (laughs) the Gatorade. That's right. Don't drink calories. And then one of his other rules was 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking up. And I was just, I don't know that I subscribe to that or or follow that, but it's just, I thought that was like a very, it was a very easy thing to implement because it's like, well, here's a tactical thing that I can do. So 30 grams of protein, and if you're not drinking your calories, which means that he's not suggesting drinking a protein shake, then he's saying eat 30 grams. So there's seven grams of protein in an egg. Yeah, so it's a buttload of protein. Are we supposed to eat like four eggs, like just going in to start the day? I don't know. That sounds kind of high. I mean, I guess that's fine. I mean, you can have a piece of chicken. Four eggs, do people do have a four egg? But I don't know. I don't subscribe to that. I don't necessarily think there is no one way to do it. Yeah. It might work for you. You know, I do things like Bulletproof Coffee. And Bulletproof Coffee, Dave Asprey has this Bulletproof Diet. And it's more like a fasted morning, meaning you do drink calories because you're putting fat in your coffee coming in from his like brain octane or his coconut oil or or ghee or butter. And so you're getting that high level of fat but you're not eating anything else besides that. So his would be the opposite or at least a different way of consuming where Tim Ferriss would say protein is the most important thing in the morning. With guy, a guy like Dave Asprey, who I would actually probably recommend over Tim Ferriss in terms of diet and nutrition because Tim Ferriss is more an everyman. He kind of figures things out, but he he's kind of like the jack of all trades, but master of none kind of guy where he knows tons of stuff. Yeah. He's probably the true generalist or minimalist, you know, in terms of what you should be doing. But Dave Asprey, he's done some crazy research and science and science backed studies about why consuming fat in the morning is more beneficial than consuming anything else. Yeah. Protein as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I like the bulletproof coffee stuff. My hang, I'll put the protein powder in there along with the coconut oil. It's super good, but I don't do that every day. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Do you drink that cold? Are you blending it hot? Yeah, I'm blending it hot. Oh, okay. With your protein powder? Yeah, with the vanilla protein. It's like a vanilla coconut coffee thing. Super good. All right. I've never tried that. Uh, you've Is that your own personal invention? Personal invention. Patent pending. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, so that's kind of the uh, the diet front, really just being conscious of what you're, t- and maybe you can start doing the log. So what I started using was the My Fitness Pal app mm-hmm. based on Steve Scott's recommendation on the podcast this summer, just like track everything, including what's, what's going into your body. And yeah. even if you don't change your diet, like the first few weeks, it's just like, it's kind of eye opening to see like, oh crap, this is what I'm eating. Like, oh, they're like, I'm way off the charts in certain areas. Yeah. And it makes you more conscious, like going back for that second beer, going back for that second cookie, just because it's like, well, I got to log it. Right. So that's something that's been helpful. And then in working with you, trying to figure out, well, what's the result 18 hours from now, right? Trying to map that out. Yeah, that beer and pizza is delicious at the moment, but how do you feel tomorrow? And it's like, ah, trade-offs, trade-offs, trade-offs. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Tell me about the workout stuff. 
because this has been a change for me. Like my workout prior to uh, starting working with Rob was usually treadmill desk a few days a week and then maybe yoga on the weekend and maybe one kind of like CrossFit style kettlebell workout during the week. Really not a lot going on there. And so you introduced me to a term called metabolic workouts, which were a shock to the system, to be honest. But like, can you explain what that is, how that works? Well, it's exactly actually you touched on it because we want to do something to our body that shocks the way that we process things, the way that we adapt to stuff, right? So you have a specific metabolic rate and we want to shock that and speed up your metabolic rate and make your body have to respond to something. So metabolic rate is like resting, I'm going to burn however many calories I'm going to burn if I do not. Right, exactly. So the way that we approach it is things like, we call it a metabolic workout. Some people would call it like a HIIT workout, right? A high intensity workout, interval training, things like that. So what we're trying to do is one thing. It all comes down to this one word and that's adaptation. We're trying to get the body to adapt to what you're doing and, and the stress that you're putting on it. So whatever we do as a workout, it needs to, the only function is to get the body to adapt to that one thing. And that's one of the reasons why in the workout world, we'll have things like phases. Some workout programs will have a three-week phase, some will have a six-week phase, some will have an eight-week phase. And then within those phases, there might even be sub-phases. But the reason why we do it is because the body adapts. So after six weeks, the body understands, oh, I can do this. Now we might reach, depending on what we're doing, we might reach a ceiling. Like the body's not going to get really much stronger at that one thing unless we change it up. And for lifting, it might be changing the angle from a flat bench to an incline bench. For cardio wise, it might be rearranging. I mean, just the fact, just the idea of rearranging the order at which you're doing the exercises is a way to trigger adaptation, changing it up. So instead of starting on, if you're doing a full body workout, instead of starting on maybe legs, you start on a full body movement like thrusters or a burpee or something like that. And that'll change the way that your body responds to every single exercise following that. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why I designed. So the program that I designed for you is based on a lot of body weight stuff. And the reason being is because you do this at home, mostly. You do have a gym membership. You do go to the gym sometimes, but we wanted this to be as simple as possible where you weren't working out for more than 20 minutes or so at a time. Right. Because you are a busy entrepreneur and we wanted to figure out a way for you to kind of, I mean, like you said, your workouts were kind of sporadic. They weren't consistent. They weren't necessarily focused on anything specific. So what we did was we created a six day a week program for something for you to stick to. And not only that, we created it where you were able to track your results as you went and were able to kind of see how you were getting stronger. And that's really important when we're talking about working out. It's the same thing with diet. We want to see, we want to see the results, right? In weight loss, we want to see the results in energy levels. Well, you also want to see the results when we're talking about creating a fitness program of you getting stronger. Yeah. If you're not seeing strength increases, then your program is either faulty or you're not consistent with it. You're not compliant with it. So that's how we kind of first originally designed your workouts. Yeah. And this was a big change for me. It's like, okay, I've been going to the gym for 10 years and do some bench, I'll do some squats, you know, but never tracking any of it and never having, right. <laughs> never having a, a plan either. Just going in and being like, well, that machine's open or that bench is open. And that was it. But like to actually write down the, the results, like how many reps did you get done? How long did this take you to do? It was actually interesting and rewarding to see like over the course of a month, over the course of two months, like, yeah, I'm actually making some progress here. Oh, yeah. So right now we're hosting this eight week challenge in our community and it's all body weight stuff. But I have a girl in there who just competed in a power lifting competition. Powerlifting is deadlifts, squats, and chest press, right? Those are the only three exercises in a powerlifting competition. She is insanely strong, stronger than me. I mean, yeah. you know, in comparison. And she's fairly ripped as well. She added these on inside the community. We have to post our workouts and how we're doing. So as the weeks go by, everybody can see how you've gotten stronger, right? And it's part of the accountability and part of the motivational part of it, right? But she posts in there, which I didn't ask her to do, but she does it. She posts her lifting workouts what she does every single day. She posts her leg workouts, she posts her chest and back workouts, she posts everything. And I go in there and I look and it's fantastic because you're seeing her numbers and the way that she organizes it. And this is the difference between people who really do succeed at the gym and people who just flounder around and spend years doing basically the same crap. Yeah, <laughs> which was me. Which was you, and which is most people. 
Most of us wander into the gym and we like, what, what, what machine is open right now? Let me, uh, yeah. <laughs> let me see. And then you go and you sit there and you check your emails and you're just kind of like, ah, well, I don't know what I should do. And then you check YouTube, like maybe what's your, what work should I do? You're kind of like, you wait until you get there to figure it out. This girl shows up with a notebook. Everything's written down in the order in which she's going to do it. She knows the workouts she did, the exercise or the weights that she did the last time, the rep count, everything. She knows what she did. She's like, I have to execute this. I have to do either the same or better this time. And then if she doesn't, then she has to look at why did that happen? Maybe it was, like you said earlier, about maybe you had like a late night, you drank too much, you ate bad food, and your body's not going to perform as well. That's just, that's just the reality of it. But at least you know why. Yeah. At least we know why. And there's no way to get better at anything, which is one of the reasons why I like working with entrepreneurs, because entrepreneurs understand that your business is not going to succeed without your consistent work. We can't take, like we do with our fitness, we take, ugh, I haven't worked out in six months. I can't take six months off of my <laughs> business and then come back and expect the ball to just be rolling. It's going to take so long for all the momentum to build back up again. And so the same thing applies for health and wellness. People just think that it doesn't have to be treated like a business. So that's, again, like that's one of the reasons why I like talking to guys like you, where it's like, even we have ups and downs in our business just like we have in our health and our wellness. Yeah. So that's why I like working with entrepreneurs. The tracking made sense. The plan, step by step by step, that made sense. In the 20 minutes a day, I was like, okay, I can do 20 minutes a day. <laughs> it's manageable. It's, it, it was manageable. And it's like, okay, I don't always have to go to the gym and I don't have to like spend an hour on the treadmill or something, which, you know, I used to run way more frequently. I used to do half marathons and stuff. And it's like, I'm not convinced that just running at a flat rate for an hour is that good for you i don't know like because now we're doing more the interval style cardio and it's like you're in and out in 20 minutes and what's your take on that even like the elliptical i see people on the elliptical it's like is your heart rate even elevated at all right now yeah i was writing and i never posted i wrote this article it was more like a kind of reflection of the different types of people that are in a gym and i compared them to the different kinds of people that are in an office and the people that are on the treadmill, every time you walk into the gym, I don't go into like normal gyms anymore. Like I don't have a 24 hour fitness membership kind of thing. If you show up at the gym at the same time every night, five o'clock, or if you show up at the same time every morning, you're going to see the same person on the treadmill. Am I right? They're always the same person. They've got a magazine, they've got a book, they're listening to a podcast, they're doing whatever, and they might be jogging or they might be walking and they're just, they're doing their thing, but they do the same thing every day, right? And again, that gets back to not triggering adaptation. Our body has nothing to respond to. So they stay the same, right? So that's weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years of doing the same thing with no results, right? Those are the people in the office that show up every single day. They punch the card, they sit at their desk, they're not side hustling. They're not trying to improve their career life. They're not trying to get a promotion. They're not doing anything. They're on autopilot from start to finish every single day. They punch out, they go home, and then they do whatever they want in the evening, and they don't stress about any of the other stuff. They don't even care. It's not even a thought in their mind. That's what it's like to be on the treadmill. It's like they go there, they just zone out. They don't pay attention to how their body feels. They have every distraction in the world, and they don't track any of it. That's basically, so that's like, those are the people on the treadmill that walk are the same people that just punch the card and punch the card in and out every day. And then there's everybody in between, right? And then there's the guys that are at the gym and the women that are at the gym that are there just to socialize. Those are the water cooler people, the people you can't stop them coming to your desk every single day. They walk into your cubicle, they start talking to you and they just won't shut the hell up, <laughs> right? And you're like, Jesus Christ, dude, I'm trying to work here. I'm here to do work. There's people in the gym like that too, where they just, they look around for friends. They're trying to find people and this is their social hour. And Arnold Schwarzenegger said, this is, you know, one of the, I can't remember his exact quote, but I remember him talking about the gym and what the gym is. The gym is not social hour. The gym is time to get work done. And that was one of the great things about Schwarzenegger was that he really treated the gym like it was work. Now he was extremely outgoing and had a huge personality, but he also understood that the gym was the time to get the real work done where he was going to get the payoff. And then you go all the way up to the top of the list of the people in the office. And then you go to the boss right? Boss comes in, he has an agenda, he knows what needs to get done that day, he tells everybody what they need to do. And that's how things get done, right? At the end of the day, he hangs the hat up and he goes home and he enjoys his life, right? But he got everything done throughout that day. And then whatever he didn't get done, he knows what he needs to get done the next day, right? It's really calculated, it's really measured. He's checking his results along the way, making sure that he's progressing. Yeah, the business has to grow or it's dying. Yeah. And that was the difference to me, like actually scheduling it. It's like, well, 20 minutes, right? A year ago, I probably could have 
carved out 20 minutes. I just didn't prioritize it. And so that was kind of like, like you said, you got to want it. So that was put step one. And then you know, actually scheduling, actually prioritizing and having to be these short little workouts. Okay. I can get it done at home. Like, look, you know, remove as many of the excuses as possible. So, and actually, if you're curious about what kind of workouts to do, Rob's got a cool resource at openskyfitness.com slash free workouts. What is it? Five home workouts. Yeah, there's five home workouts in there and all of the workouts are all body weight. Okay, cool. So you don't have to do anything in terms of having a gym membership or anything like that. And I break it down into five different categories, circuit training, AMRAP, which means as many rounds as possible, Tabata, on the minute workouts and 5010 workouts. And you'll have to kind of download it to see what I mean by that. But basically, it's like a template. You use these templates, these five different templates to create your own workouts. And you basically have unlimited workouts that you can do. Gosh, the on the minute one is that that's the Tabata one. No, Tabata is where it's 20 seconds moving 10 second breaks, usually for four minutes. Okay. And you can either pick one exercise or multiple exercises to do in there. The on the minute is basically like you have three exercises, you're going to do five reps of each exercise. But you have to do that every minute on the minute for the next 10 or 20 minutes, or whatever it is oh, for 20. There. <laughs> Those are so brutal. When we did that one, you messaged me back and said, like, this one kicked my butt. Yeah, totally. Just to finish what I was saying about the boss that shows up at the gym, the way that somebody that shows up at the gym with these kinds of workouts, like these five home workouts, or they have their workouts written out, ready to go, that's the boss in the gym. That's the person who doesn't waste time. They got their headphones on, they show up with their notepad, they show up with their workout, or they hire a personal trainer. They don't want to waste their time when they're there. They want to be as efficient and productive as possible while they're there. So just to wrap up, that's why you want to download things like this. This is why you want to have these workouts ready to go when you walk in the door so you don't have to waste your time. Yeah, We want to be as efficient as possible. For sure. All right. So I like the MyFitnessPal on the food tracking side. Any other apps or tools that you are finding successful with your clients? One of those apps that I like for habits is an app called Streaks. It only allows you to put six different habits in there. And what you basically do is you see these six habits and they're all listed on the screen. They all are circle and you press it down with your thumb and the circle kind of lights up and it says that you completed that habit for the day. Okay. And it gives you a streak, right? So if you do it every day, if say your habit that you want to create is drinking water, and that's usually when I work with a lot of my clients, water is number one on the list. It's like, okay, how are we going to get you to drink more water? What does drinking a lot of water do for you? Well, our body is made up of 75 to 85% water. All of our cells need water to function, but we also need water to digest. And for most of us, we're not consuming. I was just talking to somebody, interviewing somebody on my show recently who was talking about how something like 90% of people don't drink any water, not even not enough water, any water throughout the day. Like ask yourself, if you're listening to this, do I usually drink a bottle of water? Or a glass of water. And you know somebody's full of it. You know that somebody doesn't when they're saying, well, does coffee count as water? Does tea count as water? It's mostly water. It doesn't count as water unless it's water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you have to put something in it to sweeten it, like a packet of something, no, it doesn't count as water. Are you drinking any water throughout the day? And for a lot of people, it'll be zero. Wow. Okay. Which is kind of mind-blowing. And they'll say, I just don't like the taste of water. And a lot of times it's because they've become so adopted to something sweet something flavored. Yeah. Water tastes weird and kind of bland to them. What do you think about this? So this is my dad's theory. I don't know if this is true or not. His theory <laughs> okay. is like, while you're, eating, you're probably going to be like, dude, <laughs> it's like while you're eating, water actually hurts your digestion because it's like diluting your stomach acid. So if you can eat and then like not drink that much and then drink later, like once you've already kind of like kickstarted the digestion. Yeah. You know, your dad's actually not far off. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a really good point to bring up. You don't want to disrupt the digestive process of the stomach acids that you have, right? You don't want to dilute the microbiome and allow the gut to digest the food properly. So yes, when you're eating food, most of the time we don't overconsume water while we're eating unless we're completely dehydrated or something else, when in that case, we just probably should be drinking water and not focusing on food. There's, I think Men's Health or some of these shape magazines would say this is one of the tricks to not consuming as much food is to drink a gallon of water or a bunch of water before you eat. It doesn't help with digestion because it, yes, it does break everything down. And so it doesn't allow the stomach acids to basically do their job before they enter the small intestine and the large intestines. So it could disrupt some of that digestion. So you're better off just having water, sipping water, helping wash food down during meals. That's a better way to approach drinking water. And then the rest of the day you have all day. You're not eating yeah. for more than what, two hours out of an entire day. If that, 
maybe an hour out of every day in terms of just consuming. So there's the rest of the day to consume tons and tons of water. And that's when you should be doing it. Okay, fair enough. How about on the sleep front? We've got an example from the the Facebook group where this guy is, you know, getting up crazy early, staying up late and not getting enough sleep. Like what's your, are you getting eight hours a day? Eight hours a night, I should say. I try to get for eight hours a day. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays is when I work with clients in person. I have to be at my first client's house at 5.30 a.m. I get up at 4.30 and I leave at 5. The night before, I pack all my food. I get my clothes ready for the next day. I prep. Okay. Because I don't get home, I don't get done until 6 p.m. normally, which, and then I have a 45-minute commute home to an hour commute home. Yeah, that's a long day. It's like a 13-hour day. Now, I do have breaks here and there which is when I eat or work out for myself or whatever it is that I do. But I have to be prepped for that. And I have to get enough rest to make it through a long day like that. So when I have to get up at 4.30, I'm generally getting ready for bed somewhere between 8 and 8.30. And I try to be in bed by 9 at the latest to 9.30. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like perfect person. Uh, There are nights where I'll go to bed at 10, 10 11 o'clock, right? And I got to get up at 5.30. But I know for a fact that next day sucks. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be brutal. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to be relying on more caffeine. I'm just going to be draining my adrenals. And I'm going to be really focusing on like trying to eat more food and drink more water that day just to kind of give my body what it needs in order to get through that day. But I got to make up for it. I got to try to either take a nap at some point throughout the day if I can, which usually is impossible. But you cannot run your lifestyle like this. Which brings us to this guy in the community in your Side Hustle Nation Facebook group that was asking questions about how he can be healthy. Yeah, let's go into Bob's example okay. here and see if we can find some some opportunities for for him because this is a brutal this is a brutal work schedule here. Yeah. So Bob posted that he's has a hard time because his initial post in your group was he gets home from work and he's wasted. He has no energy to do anything else in terms of side hustle. Right. He's not talking about fitness because the question wasn't necessarily around fitness, right? But it was about how do I even take my side hustle to that next level if I can't even keep my eyes open once I walk in the door? Right. And that's why we're talking about all this stuff is like it really comes down to like having the energy to do the things you want to do. Yeah, because the average person isn't like you who has a side hustle or wants a side hustle. They're working a nine to five or maybe longer hours and then they get home and they don't have the energy to do what they want to do in order to get out of that rat race, right? Yeah. They want to build their own personal rat race, <laughs> which is eventually <laughs> what it becomes. And we're always the hardest on ourselves. So if you want to have that energy at the end of the day, you have to, you have to take care of yourself. You are the engine right? If you're not the mechanic and basically taking care of that engine, making sure that it runs perfectly, you know, and hums along, you're never going to build that side hustle. You're not going to have time for that. And chances are your family's going to suffer. Your relationships are going to suffer. Your health is going to suffer. And it's not going to get any better. It's actually probably going to get worse because the body starts to break down. It's not designed to do that. It's not designed to work those kind of like mule hours where you're like this, just this work mule all the time and to change gears is near impossible. So just to give you a background on what Bob's day looks like, and Bob, you're listening, man, I feel for you because this is a brutal schedule. So I'm going to give you guys basically a quick rundown of Bob's schedule. Gets up at 4.30, leaves at 5 a.m. He's at work by 5.50 to 6 a.m. And he usually has a couple slices of ham and a cheese stick in the morning to kick the day off. And then he gets to work and works until 9.30. So he does about three and a half hours. Somebody inevitably brings in donuts or some bakery goods and he'll have one of those. And then on break, he might also have a cup of fiber oat cereal and honey cereal and soy milk right? And an apple with peanut butter. And then he works from 9.45 to 12. And then he has lunch, which is usually a half of a rotisserie chicken without the skin. That's it. Just a piece of chicken or half of a chicken. And then he goes back to work for four hours. And by the way, he gets a half hour lunch. He scarfs a half of a chicken down in 30 (laughs) minutes. And also like, and that's his rest time as well. Goes back to work for four hours, no snacks in between by this point, and then works until 4.30 and then drives home for about, it takes him almost an hour to get home or actually over an hour to get home from 4.30 to 5.40 is his drive home. Okay. And then he gets home and he's wiped mentally and it's mentally demanding. Supposedly the guys that he works with are very negative people. He's an upbeat guy, but these guys, (laughs) I love his example, which is he says, this is how negative his, where his coworkers are. If they won the lottery, they would complain about the taxes. Yeah. That's what he says about them. Maybe this sounds familiar. Maybe this sounds like your workplace. Maybe this sounds like you're, yeah. you know, a day in the life. Yeah. So that's why we kind of wanted to 
give a rundown. Yeah, to break this down and see. So what do you see as the 80-20 of opportunity here to improve okay. the uh, energy levels? Right. So th this is what we want to do. We want to make sure that Bob's motor is running and it's humming along and it's functioning properly. It sounds like we should add like the work itself. It sounds like is physical work too. It's physical labor. It looks like he's assembling and building different pieces of furniture, big pieces of wood furniture that, that are actually really nice. Okay. And just to finish this off, he gets home, his kids... And he has to help the kids. And then he, around, what is it? I think he said 10 o'clock. He sits on the couch between 10 and 10.30, sits on the couch, catches up with his wife, talks about upcoming events and stuff like that. And then they hit the hay around 11, 11.30. And then he starts the next day off. At 4.30. At 4.30. So that's five hours. Yeah. So every day he's running his life on five hours of, I would guarantee you, not quality sleep. And... How do I know that? Because it's just a high stress day and I can't imagine him looking for, I mean, he probably passes. Here's why he passes out at 1130 in my kind of opinion. He's also drinking, by the way, 32 ounces of Powerade Zeros, which is calorie free Powerade every single day. Okay. When you drink, we talked about these sugar drinks. Well, our body, when we consume sugar free, or I should say artificial sweetener beverages, our body doesn't know that we're doing that. Our body thinks we're consuming sugary drinks, right? Taste sweet. Brain thinks, sweet things, great, awesome, let's get ready to process this. And then all of a sudden, there's no nutrients. There's nothing. There's nothing for the body to feed on. It's so confused. And so the body is like, uh, 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 I'm hungry, uh, where's the food? And then it'll mess with your sleep, it'll mess with your digestion, it'll mess with your hunger levels throughout the day. So if you're drinking these sports drinks that are sugar-free or, or even Diet Cokes, which are sugar-free, it's messing with your body like you wouldn't believe. Okay. So that would be one, if we're talking about like different strategies, that would be one thing. I would try to swap that out or minimize that and start drinking more water. If you want to have any kind of like sweet things, you can make yourself some tea, unsweetened tea, and then maybe add a little bit of honey to it. And then it's sweetened with natural sugars, fruit sugars, but obviously I wouldn't want you to put like a half a cup of honey in your drink. It would be, you'd want to start moderating that. He's starting his day off with just low sodium ham and cheese, and then he's having oat cereal. So I would start eating a little more real food, right? Low sodium ham is probably not great quality. So I would probably switch that to maybe some hard boiled eggs in the morning and better like a cheese stick is obviously highly processed cheese. So I would maybe if you do want to have cheese in the morning, maybe switching it to more of like a raw cheese, like grass fed cheese. So it's you know that it's minimally processed, and it's probably going to actually taste better than than string cheese. And then I mean, if you're having donuts at any point in the day, you know, that's not a good idea. So then he needs to pack his food. It seems like the only food that he's packing, unless it's just, unless it's that rotisserie chicken, is his fiber one oats and honey cereal with skim milk. Now, we talked about processed food and how the body breaks that down, right? So he's having a sugary snack. He's having a sugary break food throughout the morning. And then he's having just protein for lunch. And so the body, it doesn't do well with just one macronutrient, right? It wants a variety. I don't see any vegetables, period. On his day to day. Yeah. I don't know what he's eating for dinner. Even if it's a perfectly rounded meal, even if it's like the perfect, if I was to say, Nick, you did amazing, half your plate is vegetables, then you got really good proteins and you're having some non starchy vegetable, which is kind of like the way that we do organize our plate, Devin and I. But if you were doing that for dinner, it doesn't make up for the rest of the day. You also want to start having vegetables throughout the day that are going to help you with getting in your vitamins and minerals that you might be nutrient deficient in. And that's going to give you. Again, that mental energy that you would want to have to get you through the end of the day, get you home, have a conversation with kids, and maybe you only carve out 30 minutes every day to work on your side hustle. And if that's the most important thing. Now, when we're talking about people wanting to work out more, finding time to work out, I don't give a horse's butt about working out. I really don't at this point because it would just zonk the energy that he does have and take it all away for what purpose? He's not going to get physically better because his nutrition is not where it needs to be. Yeah, I got to fix that stuff first. He's got to fix that stuff first. Focus on that. And then his energy level is going to start perking up. He already has a physically demanding job. His energy level is going to come up. He's going to start feeling better. I'm not talking about like energy wise. I'm just talking emotionally. He's going to start feeling better. His moods are going to start changing to a better mood, right? And then he could start focusing on doing the thing, whatever that thing is that he really wants to do. The reason why everybody's listening to your show right now, they want to have a side hustle. They want to build a business outside of the grind. Then he could start putting his focus on that, even if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it starts to build up. And I guess I would imagine that the ideal 
side hustle would be where you can kind of transition out yeah. slowly or actually quickly. Hell, we would love to transition as fast as possible. But we know that our side hustle is supposed to clear time for us. That's the purpose. Yeah, we'll dial back the hours. It sounds like he's putting in like almost a 12 hour shift or it sounds like oh, maybe man. a 10 hour shift at this place. So it's uh, some long days. Bob, I feel for you, man. Seriously, that's not fun. One cool thing with the nature of the work being somewhat physical. So there was this study, I forget where I read this, but it was like with hotel maids. Yeah. And it was like the study of once they told them, like basically your job is like working out, you're bending over, you're scrubbing things, you're changing beds, like you're lifting stuff. Once they told them like, oh, you're getting like 10 hours of basically a workout in like every day, like that's your job. They ended up burning more calories. They like got into it. They're like, well, this is my fitness. Yeah. And they like got into it. They did it even better. And I thought that was kind of an interesting way. Like you kind of, it almost gamifies the work and say, well, this is my workout. And so you're, you know, I don't know, you're lifting the wood thing, you know, installing it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But something to consider for that, especially if that's like a part of your job, if your job involves any sort of physical labor, even I find myself like if I'm driving around town, like running errands and stuff, I'm working on breathing exercises. I'm working on tightening my core and stuff, trying to bake these things into the day. And for, I don't know if they have any benefit or not, but at least it makes me feel like I'm doing something. Yeah. No, it's true. And I, I could just see I could just see Bob literally picking up some wood, walking it from one <laughs> station to the next, but like doing walking lunges between being like, that's my workout, you know, like, I mean, yes. maybe <laughs> that could be that could totally be it. Finding a little bit of time to get some stretching in because I'm sure that, you know, I was doing a lot of, as you know, I told you about I renovated four apartments last year, working on these four different apartments all in the same property was physically demanding. And I had to take time off of lifting. Because I couldn't show up. I couldn't work a full day doing manual labor and also be lifting heavy. It just didn't work together. So I had to kind of focus on that was a lot of my physical activity. So yeah, I, I totally agree. If you don't have time for it, then make your job your workout. That's awesome. I love that idea. Yeah. Well, Rob, this has been awesome to kind of give us a quick recap. We have, look, you got to want it first. Like to prioritize your health, it's got to start with you and hopefully you don't have to hit rock bottom to get there. Maybe rock bottom for you is 10 pounds overweight. Hopefully you don't let yourself get crazy down the wrong path. Rob's saying, hey, look, 95% of this comes from the food that you put into your body. Really avoid the processed foods, avoid processed sugar. And if you can, aim your workouts at adaptation rather than just sitting on the treadmill, sitting on the elliptical, <laughs> trying, to, trying to get your heart rate up to a point where it's like, what is going on? Trying to use your muscles to the point where the body's like, what is going on here? And uh, you can download his workouts, bodyweight workouts, at openskyfitness.com slash free workouts. Rob, anything else before we wrap up here that, that's coming to mind? Yeah, for sure. There's in January after New Year, we are going to be launching another eight week challenge. It's workouts, but it's also nutrition. It's meal planning. It's all around building a whole food diet. We have a great community of people that are doing it right now as you and I speak. It's a really fun interactive group. And the whole point of it is to keep everybody kind of accountable and interacting and making it a fun process to get healthy. So if anybody's interested in doing the next round of this, we're going to be launching it again in January on January 22nd, but you can sign up for it in advance. You can get on the waiting list for it, get the information as we get closer. So this way, if you want to do this, if you're ready, if you know that like a lot of people just need to get through the new year and then they're ready to go. And I figure two or three weeks after the new year, that gives everybody a tough time to kind of get back acclimated back to being at work or being at school right. or whatever it is. The kids are away, you know, you get back to your lifestyle. So on January 22nd, we're going to kick off the next round of this SkyFit challenge. And if anybody's interested in that, they can go to openskyfitness.com slash challenge. It'll tell you all the information about what the challenge includes. And it also, there's a link there for people to sign up. And there's also a link there if they have questions and they want to ask me specific questions personally about the program. Very cool. Openskyfitness.com slash challenge, really combining everything that we talked about today, the plan, plus the accountability in a group setting. Awesome stuff, Rob. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. Don't have to be health, fitness related, whatever you got going on. Whatever it is, always remember that the process is the result. Never focus on just the result. Always focus on the process. Everything that you're doing and how you're doing it is more important than just the end goal. That's my takeaway. That's very deep. The process is the result. The journey is the destination. I love it, Rob. Thanks so much, man. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Nick. 
This edition of the Side Hustle Show is brought to you by Skillshare.com, the online learning community with more than 17,000 classes. By listening to the show, you're already investing your time and energy in improving your entrepreneurial education, improving your productivity. Well, here's a little hack for you. On Skillshare, you can learn everything from video editing to social media marketing to mobile photography and videography. There's a huge variety of subject matter on pretty much anything you'd want to learn, and it's all taught by practicing experts. The bite-sized classes are perfect for professionals who want to advance their career and for side hustlers who want to expand the skills you need to grow your business. How it works is you get unlimited access to all these classes for a low monthly price. You don't have to pay per class again. It's like Netflix only for something that'll help your business. I'm trying to step up my podcast hosting game, so I'm checking out a few classes on audio production and presentation. The cool thing is it's all on demand and the catalog has some pretty awesome stuff. Now, the best part is Side Hustle Show listeners can try Skillshare absolutely free. I think you're going to love it. Visit Skillshare.com slash Side Hustle to redeem your free month. That's Skillshare.com slash Side Hustle for a free month of unlimited access. All right, my top takeaways from this call with Rob. Number one, you got to want it. Nobody else is going to prioritize it for you. If you don't take care of your body, where will you live? That's a line from the book, The One Thing, that stood out to me when I read it and still stands out to me now. It's just become more apparent as my body has started to have some uh, mechanical problems. Like I've always exercised. It's been an important part of my day, an important part of my week, but there wasn't as powerful a driving force behind it as oh crap, you're going to slowly fall apart if you don't do this, or you're not going to be able to keep up with your son if you don't do this. It's similar to the whole, you know, find your why thing, like why side hustle? If the inherent motivation isn't there and isn't strong enough, it's, uh, it's tough to sustain. So that's takeaway number one, you got to want it. Takeaway number two, diet first, or I should say, um, fix what you're feeding yourself first, not necessarily jump on, you know, some unsustainable diet plan. But I'm coming to understand I can't eat or drink like I used to, and that's okay. I actually feel better because of it or kind of be, become more in tune with it. The good news is from an energy and a productivity standpoint, you still got to eat. So you might as well eat well, and, and you don't even have to carve out any extra time out of your day to do it. So I've been through a few dietary shifts over the last 20 years. I mean, I was the guy who would have cereal for breakfast and, and toast along with it and a sandwich for lunch and pasta for dinner. And I was the guy who would buy these little uh, Totino's pizzas uh, because they were the best deal. And I, I legitimately thought there was like a grocery store hack of mine. They were the best deal in terms of calories per dollar. You could get them on sale for a dollar and they had like 800 calories. And it was like zero actual food on these things. So, but, so let's just say I eat much better today and I don't really feel like I'm depriving myself either. Uh, but track this stuff. I like the MyFitnessPal app. You might be surprised by what you're really putting into your body and make sure you stay hydrated as well. So that's takeaway number two, uh, diet first. Takeaway number three is to have a plan. This was probably the biggest change in working with Rob and, and, and all of a sudden just having a script to follow, a step-by-step -step, uh, prescription of what to do. It eliminated the guesswork. And even though the workouts were really tough, physically demanding, it made it easy for me knowing exactly what I was supposed to do. It was like, okay, in 20 minutes, this is going to be over. Like his example of um, the boss at the gym, like have a plan. And I think that goes, you know, on the workout side, but also on the meal planning side too. Plus for me, at least it was really rewarding, you know, to be lying there gasping for air and sweaty, knowing that I got it done and knowing that I was getting better and stronger every week. Once again, notes and links for this episode are at SideHustleNation.com slash Rob slash R-O-B. That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you're feeling more energized as we speak. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show, where we're diving into some deadly website sins. Hopefully you're not guilty of them, but if you are, we'll show you how to fix them next Thursday morning. I'll see you then. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com.